Does it look like that in a triangle pattern? Give an empty box to stop racing in VR. I said it ties them out more. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Exactly what I'm saying. It's more immersive, but it's definitely more tiring. It was three. Yeah, seems to fit nicely. Once you know what you're doing, simple this. <laughs> Very easy. Little Mixer, thank you for 76 months. And Big Ads, thank you for subbing. Welcome. Need to download the software, aren't I? Well, that should also go straight on. No, I don't I don't want full motion, Bruce. A load cell pedal's worth the money. If you're racing, yeah. Yeah. A lot of a lot of racing is about braking. Being quick is a, is a lot about braking. And load cell pedals are the best way to get consistent braking. It's a lot easier for your brain to remember how hard you pressed than it is how far you pressed. So with a low tail pedal, it's about how hard you're pressing. All the others are generally just potentiometers that measure how far you press. And it's much harder to be consistent braking using that kind of a setup. Now, why have we got loads of bits with this wheel? Seriously, this, I've got this like entire packet of stuff with this wheel. Like, what am I meant to do with all this? Do we, do we even need this stuff? <laughs> Have a quick look at the manual. Declaration of conformity, graphics, symbols, warranty, general safety, general description. Nobody cares. Risks, section three, handling, transport, installation. Universal hub on the back of the wheel allows the user to install various adapters. Refer to your adapter motor manufacturer for compatibility. Blah, 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 useless. User guide, safety notice, dear God. Introduction, here we go. Four-way points of view switch, rotary and press, button nine and ten, six and five.
one to two and three to four two-way toggles and 15 to 22 integrating warning leds as well as backlit are present only on gt pro spec that's what i got didn't i, I got gt pro spec To use the point of view switch up, down, left and right, you are supposed to gently move the joystick knob into the desired direction. If you feel the tactile click, you are pressing the center button. Um, beg to differ, mate. This is actually a click when you move it around as well. Button 15 and 22, which are these, have integrated warning LEDs. Once the button has been pressed, the respective LED will start flashing. Once it's been pressed again, the flashing stops. Useful for warning options, pit limiter, etc. That's all right, so you can use that as like a pit limiter button. Toggles are useful for things like lights and wipers, ABS traction control. For those switches here. Mr. Kaheli, uh, I love all your absolutely amazing and entertaining content. I've been lucky enough watching all your absolutely amazing and entertaining content for years. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kelly. Appreciate the support. Thank you. USB connection. Connect the steering wheel only using the provided cable. Please note that the wheel connector is keyed as the picture below, so it fits one way. Try to install the USB coiled cable by wrapping it loosely on your force feedback motor shaft adapter in such a way that it will not suffer any strain when doing full opposite steering rotation. Do not over tighten the ring. Paddle shift to calibration. Thank you for the hype train. Although all the racing wheels are already tested and should work correctly, you may need to adjust the shifter sensor activation point for correct use. If paddles aren't correctly set, you may skip these steps. Oh, if they are already correctly set. You need the screws, a Torx T10 and a small Phillips screwdriver. You are. So was that. Accessing the trimmers, locate and remove two torque screws on the back of the wheel. Connect the racing wheel TPC, wait for it to recognize it, open the properties. Carefully place a small flip screwdriver inside the screw hole. Oh, look, <laughs> look at this. It actually has a wheel pattern <laughs> in this particular manual. Balmut, thank you for 60 months. Inner pattern, outer pattern, amazing. Paddle adjustment, T10 drive, torque drive needed. Yeah, this was the one that, oh God. This was the one that I think I said. Is it this one? No, this one's. Pretty good. I think I'll push this one back actually. It's a little bit too close. I'll push it back a little bit. There's like a little uh, torque screw there. You can see it or not. There's basically a torque screw there so that this paddle can come this way a bit so that you can adjust, you know, whether you have the reach here or out there, just the depth of the, of the grip effectively, which is what that's saying. <laughs> Useful tips. Each wheel comes with a full sheet of stickers and a set of plastic tweezers useful to install them. Ah, that's what the tweezers are for. Before applying the sticker, make sure the surface is clean. Black and white long labels are designed to be placed over the dial setting name. The what? How does that work? On some systems, the backlit buttons will only remain on when the PC is turned off. Will remain on even when the PC is turned off. Wow. Shift to maintenance. Once a year, it's recommended to put a really small drop of lubricant, sewing machine oil or similar, on the points 
as the drawing indicates. Interesting. I don't own sewing machine oil. <laughs> maybe, maybe Mr. Squirrel has some. Yeah, but WD-40 stinks, doesn't it? That's the problem with WD-40. This year on not found 77 months. Wonder if you could set the steering axis of your swing in the golf game. Do you know what? You're not wrong about that. I could probably use the clutch pedal. <laughs> I just get this, like, perfect swing every time. Set up your Q controls cable as shown in the photo below. Wrap the cable loosely around the wheel hub to avoid any strain on connector. You seen this? This diagram? Look how many times they wrap it around the coil, around the base of the um, thing? It's like literally goes like that. Um, oh, they give you, that's interesting. They give you a, ah, does this thing need extra power? They give you not just the connector, but they give you a single female to dual male, implying that it needs the extra power for the screen. Probably tell us in the manual. Yeah, each GTX steering wheel is provided with a dedicated Y-style splitter USB extension cord. User must use this cable to connect the GTX wheel. Pippa, what are you doing? Can you not do that? Where have you even got that from? Stop it. She's found a tissue somewhere and she's shredding it. She loves shredding tissue. Can you just not? Oh, God. Yeah, Pippa the Destroyer. That's what we'll have to call you. User must use the cable to connect the GTX wheel to the PC. Otherwise, if plugged directly to a standard front back panel, it might not work as expected as the port is not able to slot enough power. To avoid any additional extension cords, supplied coiled cable must be connected directly to the supplied USB splitter. Yep. Before first use, the Formula CSX wheel needs the ultimate game tech software to display data streamed from the simulator. It's also a needed tool useful to customize and configure various options. Right. I think we're into the software download stage now. Download True Drive software. Configuration for SimQ2. Right. That takes me to a May the 5th, 2021 build. True Drive downloading. Cube 2 True Drive with Paddock Early Access. What's Paddock? You can bail firmware updates, probably. It doesn't tell me what Paddock is. I've no idea. True Drive Paddock enables more casual racers 
to access predefined force feedback setting profiles shared by enthusiasts via an intuitive user panel. Racers can add their shared profiles for use and edit them to their liking. Okay. Fair enough. Hey, Pep. I'm doing well. Thank you. Right. Let's um, unzip that. Participate in the development of your SimiCube by allowing TrueDrive to send anonymous electrical performance, health, and settings data to the dev team. I accept the Granite Devices end user agreement. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Right, that's that installed. And then I also need to go to ultimategametech.com and ultimate game tech Download UGT Manager, okay. Download Manager Guide, okay. Did you watch Dan's vids on setting it up? Nope. What, when have I a chance to do that, pups? <laughs> UGC setup was blocked because it could harm your device. Keep. Microsoft Defender Smart Screen reported this app is not commonly downloaded. You should only open files that you trust. Dear Microsoft, can you stop treating me like a baby? Report this app as safe. There you go. I think this is a safe website. There you go. Click. Enter the characters you see. I -R -R -R. Submit. Thank you for submitting your feedback. You're welcome. Unbelievable. Right. UGT setup. Windows doesn't recognize the app. Run anyway. turn off smart screen. It's only because I'm using Edge. I don't usually use Edge. PC manager successfully installed. Hit closed. Right. So that's that installed as well. Okay. So now I'm going to put the USB connector thingy in the back.
Okay, that's that screwed in. Why don't you stop this thing from flapping around while you're driving? Would help if I had it the right way, wouldn't it? So it's got it like coiled around a couple of times like that. How does that diagram have it? I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> it's not entirely clear how this is working. I just feels like that's going to keep snagging. If you want to call it after you get everything sensors, the turn the wheel doesn't tighten. Yeah, but you have to plug it in. You know what I mean? You've got to call it in some way. Like, you're supposed to give it some tension when you put it around. Just leave it loose. What I don't want is when you start turning the wheel, it starts pulling the cable. That's just going to pull it out the splitter. Like you've got this flexible cable, but it's not really absorbing the flex. It's just, it's just when you turn it to the right, it unravels, and when you turn it to the left, it tightens. What did you do, Sim Gaming? <laughs> how did you, how did you wrap this thing, or have you gone for wireless? Like that, it's tight. Like it tightens it up. Then we can clip the cable to the rig. Well, I can I can clip the cable to the rig, but the point is you want the flex. Uh, I think. Hmm.
I think what you want to do is nick some of that tension first like that I leave it hanging how, how close is USB port well just the bar <laughs> like it wants me to wrap it but I just if I didn't wrap it what would happen if I did that with it instead like what's wrong with that Wrap over once from right to left. What do you mean that way, then? We'll go with that for now, but I'm not massively happy about the whole thing. I think we need to turn this thing on. Let's get this USB plugged in. And then get the power switched on and see what happens. No, the USB cable thing is probably just me doing it wrong. I've never had to deal with that problem before, so it's probably a good way of doing it. And as you know, what I'm doing. something on the display. Switch this on. Right, power pack is now turned on. This is why I press the button on the back now and all hell breaks loose. Something just beeps at me. It doesn't self calibrate every time. <laughs> I can feel resistance. Your SimiCube 2 Pro is ready to go, it seems. Unplug the USB cable for the wheel. Why? Why? It's just the bump stops first in Simi. Mm, 
desktop. The firmware update wizard. The firmware must be updated. Let's get that one first. Please note the talk off button must not be pressed. Can't read that, it's gone. It's doing something. Press next to continue. Press next to start the update. Unlocking and erasing program flash memory. Uh, yeah, use Opera. I'm just using Edge for this. is going to start calibrating and rotating. I'm going to unplug that then. No. Okay. I've unplugged the wheel. That's what you meant, isn't it? SimuQ firmware update completed. SimuQ will now boot up the new firmware. Press finish. Beeping. It's not doing anything. <laughs> we have to fire up semi cube. How do I get that software back? <laughs> it did a firmware update, click finish and it went away. Now I don't know how to bring it back. Q2 Pro Quick Start Guide. Yeah, but how do I run the SimiCube software again? I, I literally ran the installer first. What was that? Did that not actually install? Maybe it didn't install. They're independent, Sherlock. Did SimiCube install anything or not? SimiCube True Drive Paddock Early Access. SimiCube True 2 True Drive Paddock is available as early access for SimiCube 2 Ultimate drivers and those SimiCube Sport and Pro drivers who had to wait an extraordinarily long time. For the rest, 
true drive paddock will be available very soon. So it's not let me run that, so I have to run the classic. Okay, whatever. Right, here we go. I have the software up. It's recognizing the wheel position. So it's got that. Yeah, I didn't know what paddock was, dude. <laughs> now it's telling me, even though I've just spent a load of money on this wheelbase, I can't run it yet. I'm not allowed. <laughs> um, enable high torque mode. Do I want to do that? Probably not. I don't know. Is it centered? Uh, no. I think it thinks it's four degrees to the right, so reset center. Right, set the wheel sensor for now. This will not change your automatic sensor offset preferences. Pressing the button above only affects this session. Set permanent wheel sensor. This sets the permanent sensor steering wheel. All changes to profiles and other settings will be saved to set preferences. So, right. Now yeah. it thinks that is zero degrees. Okay. That's about right. Does it not go through any kind of startup thing then? Bump stop. How do we do bump stop then? USMC Vet, thank you for 46 months. Hawkeye, thank you for 32. Kian, thank you for two years. And Barrel, thanks for 54. Wraith26, thank you as ever, guys. Uh, there's no calibration. That's really interesting. I'm so used to having the, the wheels calibrate. Uh, right, where's bump stop then? What's the big red button? Press that whenever I want a cup of tea. That's what that is. Just hit that, and a cup of tea arrives in five minutes. Right, I've done that. Done that. Installation. There's no information on anything else. So let's have a look at the manual. is done. Blah, blah, blah. True drive software first starts up is likely to need a firmware update. That's done. General user interface is tab and in the middle shows the tab content. Only in the UK will you find an emergency T button. Yeah, that's true. Anyone tried Windows 11? Doesn't it only come out late this year? Side is a tab bar from top to bottom overview, semi cube wireless wheel management. So, I don't need to worry about that. Profiles and tuning settings, hardware settings, debug and status. Right, bottom shows a clickable blinking button if settings have not been saved. Right, okay. status area, general status. Do I want to be enabled in this high torque mode or not? After every power on, the device is in in safe torque mode. In this mode, the torque is applied to approximately 4.4 newtons, and the wheel has additional friction and damping applied, which I can feel. 
High Talk mode is unlocked, must be enabled manually by pressing the enable High Talk button. The driver must read the disclaimer, notification beep will indicate the wheel changing into High Talk mode. The Simicube LED will remain blue with two red lights blinking. High top mode unlocks the max, I'd put it on and just the stream. Okay. In high top mode, the damping and friction values will take effect over the forced high values in safe top mode. Okay, it beeped. And now there's nothing there. Idle and standby mode. Simicube will beep after seven minutes when idle and talk production has been off. After one additional minute, another beep sounds. Then it'll go into standby mode. Where's the LED lights it keeps talking about that's blinking? keeps talking about a blinking LED light. I don't see one. It's on the back. <laughs> what are, you, are you serious? What use is an LED on the back? Uh, in automatically activated high torque mode, the device will not go into standby mode. Taking the first test drive, the short section is an introduction to the features of the Simicube system. The first test drive can be done with any simulator, but we recommend a Seto Corsa, Seto Corsa Competizione, iRacing or Project Cars. Place the safe talk button off in a solid place. Okay, we've got that. Power on the system and verify wheel rotation with the True Drive software. You can already create a profile and adjust some of the settings if you wish. Why are you beeping at me? Okay, add Mr. Coffee. Right, we've got our own profile now. Copy profile. We'll call this uh, high racing. Overall strength, there's a slider here. It's on 9.3 Newton meters. That sounds like a lot. 9.3. Reckon I should dial that down. Steering range, 900 degrees. That's fine. Smoothness is currently neutral. Damping is neutral. I think we'll start a bit lower, maybe. Yeah, all the way up. We'll start on 6 Newton meters and save that. Six Newton meters is plenty. Uh, start the simulator, configure the wheel to be used by sounding controls. What was this bump thing you were talking about though? Wheel rotation. Well, I've got 900 degrees at the moment. Does it stop? Oh, there you go. It's hard to, that's cool artificially creates a bounce point that's nuts analog inputs buttons 1 to 128 oh that's ah uh, see so I thought you meant some kind of test right so it's on 5.8 newton meters it's on 900 degrees also verify the rigidity of the installation. That's, that's not going anywhere. Okay, so I guess now we plug the wheel in. Yeah, I think it is centered. 
Yeah, it's censored. Plug that in. And this thing lights up. USB device not recognized. The last USB device malfunctioned and Windows does not recognize it. That's not good. Ultimate game attack. Currently on the latest version. Blah, blah, blah. The device is not connected. Please connect your device and try again. So it's not it's not recognizing it properly. <laughs> Welcome back, Rob. Yeah, it's not recognizing this. Maybe we need to remove it device manager so it can start over, bro. Hmm. I am using a USB hub, yeah. You reckon it could be that? They're both plugged into a hub, which then goes into the PC. says unknown USB device, device descriptor request failed. What do you mean try it without software update? What does that mean? That's going to be tricky to not go via hub. That's going to be very tricky. I can go via a different hub, but going direct to the PC, which is over there, that's that's going to be interesting. It's not a powered hub, no. You think that could be the problem? Maybe I need to plug it into a powered hub. I have a powered hub. I could swap some stuff around. Okay. Let's try that. Let's try a powered hub. See how it gets on. Ugh. I wish I had a bigger room. the wheel near the stream decks that one is uh, well that goes to the I can unplug that one the yellow one Check nothing's gone. All right, still have a keyboard, that's good. <laughs> Try that. Take them out of there. Thank you. 
doing something. Key control GTX setup and ready to go, it says. And now it says it's downloading file two of seven. So yeah, it looks like it was uh, needed a powered hub. Which is fine. I can just move some stuff that doesn't need power to that hub. Oh, that's how much strawberry. It says downloading file two of seven, so I think this ultimate game attempt thing's doing something. Downloading three of seven. Have you got Type-C connectors on your computer? No. Alban, thank you for 18 months. How was your break? <laughs> Full of work. <laughs> Nitro, thank you for 15. When the device manager now not complaining about that thing ultimate gamer tech says it's synchronizing so it's doing something with this maybe it's like updating the software on it or something you're not joking Oldman as I can. I'm going to Tenerife for a week, mate. <laughs> That's my plan. Yeah, my PC is compatible with Windows 11, but I, d I can't see me going to 11 for... I don't know. A couple of years, maybe. I'm quite happy with 10. I have no pressing need to go to 11. Okay, right. It says in Ultimate Game Attack now, it says it's ready. It also has two compatible sims detected. One is Euro Truck Sim and the other is iRacing. That's interesting. We've got layouts down here. Adjusting the paddle shift activation points. Although all racing wheels are already tested, it should work correctly. Blah, blah. Click on input devices on top, then click keep controls GTX. Night Gaming, thank you very much, sir, for five subs gifted. Can we get some squirrel gifting chat for him, please? And Jarrett, thank you for a tier two, 65 months. Whee! Um, this is confusing because it says in the manual, click on input devices and then cube controls GTX. Well, when I click on input devices, I see UGT Race LCD V2. 
and then under other devices I see just about everything except Cube Controls GTX. I don't see any Cube Control. How's the hay fever? Auburn, it's calmed down a lot. And I mean a lot from what it was. It was horrendous. Hmm. Holy smoke, doodle. Can you see this config screen? Dear me. What? This is like mission control. What's this? Well, it's recognizing button presses and stuff. This is nothing to do with the direct drive D-Pain. This is um, the wheel itself, nothing to do with direct drive. Current software, layout. I'm, I don't understand why I don't see Q Controls GT listed here. What can use the, you can use this display for almost anything you want, whatever the software will do. It's a screen, you can put things on it. You can have the gear, you can have the RPMs, you can have flash to change gear, you can have the chat on there, you can do what you want. Start test data. Yeah. It's just changed the display. It's got test data gears coming on it now. if you can see that can you see that display it's going through different gears and stuff it's hilarious right we'll have to play with that later let's fire up um, iris and see if the wheel actually works shall we Yeah, I can switch pro I can switch camera in a minute. The only thing is when I do you'll you won't see me because I've had to nick the lens off this camera over there, so this won't be active. Until I swap the lenses over. And once I swap the lenses over, you can't have this view anymore. <laughs> Uh, Harris, have a look on, um, just run the specs command. It's all there. Oh, let me just eat something here. Do you honestly think that's what streamer life is?
most of the rest of this is all to do with the paddle adjustment things, but I'm a little bit worried at the moment the software doesn't recognize this. I might have to restart the software or unplug and plug this again, maybe, just to give it a kick. Just let an eye racing update. <laughs> Yeah, crow daddy, right. My grandmother used to say that. Oh, if you don't eat your crust, you won't have curly hair. To which my response was, I don't want curly hair. <laughs> like, even if even if eating the crusty part of bread did anything whatsoever to your hair, I don't want it curly anyway. It's the most stupid thing. Yeah, at the moment, iRacing's um, just updating some stuff. It's done now. Done. Welcome to iRacing. Go racing. Test drive. Yeah, it's just a ham and, ham and pickle. Some uh, skips and some strawberry. Car. We'll take the Ferrari one on. Track. Conditions, time of day. Yep, I remember that, Jamie. beeping oh it says iRacing on here now it's got the iRacing logo I think this is mystically recognized that iRacing just started up <clears throat> um, go for that view like I say my camera's not here you see the overhead view. You configure controls. Turn the wheel fully one way than the other. Hey, it just disconnected the cable. <laughs> oh man! Somehow I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Did a full lock left, full lock right, and it went dink and just pulled the USB out. <laughs> I'm going to need a better solution. Oh, you scumbag. Now I can't reach the cable. Come here, you. Also, the wheel kept beeping at me. I just don't get how this is supposed to work, you know? How they got you wrapping things around. Try 
I'll have to figure out that thing. Right. Reset that. Why does the wheel keep beeping? Is that beeping normal? <laughs> I've never had a wheel based beep of it before. Done. Make sure your wheels range turn wheel 90 degrees to the left. No, I don't want to depress the throttle. No, don't make me do that. I don't want to do all my throttle stuff again. Literally got the settings how I want them. You can usually mount a USB QR close to the wheel. I'm not sure what you mean. Pain. you it's messed about with my have steering we have a beeping wheelbase <laughs> um, we have pedals which is not messed with I don't think I have a car set up some controls required to drive and not some oh okay on the gearbox no I don't Wait button for upshifting. Man, that is the clickiest thing in the world. I definitely need to move that though. I need to get a Torx thing and just pull that back a touch. It's too far in. Is force feedback connected directly? Don't know. At the moment, it says wheel force and then strength. So presumably I need to move this because I think I put it on. Go to that view a second. I think we set its maximum. Somewhere. Overall strength 5.8. So I'll just put it on. I'll put it on eight because that's what it's been used to anyway. Put that on eight newton meters. Save. I already said, Mads, that that would be the case. Because I don't have the lens. That lens up here on this camera has gone a bit wonky. I had to swap it for that one.
I haven't got a pit button. <laughs> okay, I'm not getting much feedback. Ooh, that, is, that feels very different. That feels very, very, very different. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Strength. Um, I don't know what we want this on, to be honest. It didn't feel like it was strong enough. Put on 16. I'm just gonna eke it in a little bit. So that's. That's like super light. But if you look at the force feedback thing at the top, it's kind of where it should be. That's a bit stronger. Check true drive comfort. 